Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. Hey everyone, welcome to this Halloween special episode of Retro West, giving our viewers a fix of good old nostalgia by reviewing games of their childhood. Sonic the Hedgehog here, and last year, we tackled Silent Hill 2. This year, we are remaining in retro gaming territory by turning the clocks back to 1996 by reviewing the remake of the first entry of one of Sega's trademark rail shooters. Can Greg escape the Haunted Mansion, or will he be joining the Force of the Undead? Well, without further ado, let's find out. The year is 1996, and the music industry is turned on its head as all-female British pop band The Spice Girls released their debut single, Wannabe. If you wanna be my lover, you gotta get with my friends. Not now, James! Oh, sorry! 1996 was also a very sad year in hip-hop music, as Tupac Shakur was killed in a shooting in Las Vegas. Finally, we are introduced to our little pets in our pockets as the Tamagotchi Virtual Pet was released in Japan. Do you remember using one? Which one had the longest lifespan and how long did it survive? Let me know down in those comments. 1996 was also a significant year in the gaming industry. Nintendo struck out twice as the Nintendo 64 was released in the USA and the first entry in Nintendo's catchiest franchise, Pokemon, was released for the Game Boy. So, which one did you pick as your starter on your first playthrough? Charmander, Squirtle, or Bulbasaur? Once again, let me know down on those comments. Arcade was also one of the epicenters of the social aspects of playing video games. Although the consoles were primarily designed to bring the arcade experience to your home, Rail shooters were one of the biggest attractions in most arcades. The main reason why this genre was unique was the use of a light gun peripheral, which was a great way to immerse yourself into the game. This title was released for the arcades on September 13, 1996. The game was later to the ports into the PC and Sega Saturn in 1998. You play as the AMS agent Thomas Rogan and his partner known only as the letter G. It is up to you to infiltrate a secret bio lab with reincarnated subjects to take down the head of the project, Dr. Kyrian. The axis ability scores are as follows. There's a bow the game of the lemon. You can customize what color your targeting reticle is going to be in. In two player mode, this feature can be a lifeline for a player with a visual impairment. On top of that, you can customize the thickness and outline of your reticle. This will allow the player to enjoy the game without the risk of you getting any eye strain while looking for the screen for your targeting reticle. So this game seems to be purposely filled for players with visual impairments. Next up, an ability to gain a 10. There are subtitles which are present in this game. These subtitles are displayed in both cutscenes and during stages. So our player with a hearing impairment should be able to play this game with no issues. Mobility, gain a 7. Although there is no way to completely customize the button layouts on the console version, you use the Xbox One version to test this game. However, you can customize which stick moves your targeting reticle. Also, you can customize which speed your targeting reticle moves on the screen. However, in the PC version, you can use the mouse to play this game. Also, on the Switch version, you can use a Joy-Con in the same way that you would do using a light gun in the arcade version. So this game can be played with a mobility impairment but more customization options on the Xbox version would be an excellent addition to the accessibility. Last for something we buy no use least gameplay game in 8. For the remake of a real shooter from 1996, this game is pretty good. The developers seem to have stuck to the original source material pretty well. The game's soundtrack is okay. But an option to change the game's remastered soundtrack to the original soundtrack for the Saturn version would be an excellent addition. The PC version has a glaring optimization issue, as this game eats your VRAM for breakfast. When James was running the PC version, it used a whopping 5GB of VRAM, so if you're using a low to mid-tier graphics card, it's best to go for the console version. 
as this game will put a massive strain on your PC's hardware. All in all, this game is quite fun. Nowadays, rail shooters are very few and far between. This is due to the novelty of motion control controllers dying off, apart from the Joy-Cons and the Nintendo Switch. In summary, House of the Dead Remake is a faithful recreation of the 1996 shooter that is hailed as an all-time classic. So if you're looking for a cheap rail shooter to play over the Christmas period or even a Christmas present, this game is highly recommended. The overall score is 90%. Remember, if you are going after tricking or treating, remember to bring someone with you. By the way, guys, if you need a joke, Jens and I have got you covered. What do zombies speak in Latin? Because it's a dead language. Okay then, that's it for another year. We will see you guys on the next review, which is probably going to be one of the most emotional reviews I have ever done on this channel. Okay guys, I'll see you then.